With a service record spanning over 50 years, the F-16 has used its high maneuverability, speed, and durability to become one of the most decorated aircrafts of our time. In this video, we'll take a comprehensive look at the F-16 story, from development to production and implementation, and hopefully achieve a deeper understanding of what has made the F-16 such a dominant force in the sky. But before we do, we ask that you consider liking the video if you find it entertaining or informative. And if you would like to see more videos like this, feel free to subscribe to the channel. The F-16 can trace its roots back to the late 1960s, when it was becoming increasingly apparent that air superiority was the key to being successful in future wars. Colonel John Boyd, a U.S. Air Force pilot and military strategist, came to the conclusion that the United States needed a fighter aircraft that was small, lightweight, and could maneuver with minimal energy loss while still providing maximum thrust. How does it feel to have 14,000 pounds of thrust between your legs? Mm, it's a little less than what I'm used to, but it do. Boyd teamed up with mathematician Thomas Christie to develop the energy maneuverability theory. This theory made it possible to assign a quantifiable value to an aircraft's aptitude for combat based on its weight, potential thrust, and drag. The energy maneuverability theory was so revolutionary that a group of flight engineers and analysts, unofficially called the Fighter Mafia, was formed with the purpose of designing new fighter aircraft using the mathematical equation. These nerds were able to secure funding from the Department of Defense for their aeronautical research projects. The Fighter Mafia's work led them to the conclusion that what they needed was a 20,000-pound air-to-air fighter that was optimized for combat at speeds of Mach 0.6 to 1.6 at altitudes of 30,000 to 40,000 feet. Several aerospace companies came forward with proposals to produce prototype fighters, but in the end, General Dynamic and Northrop were selected to compete for final production of their prototypes. General Dynamic's prototype was dubbed the YF-16 and had its maiden flight in February of 1974 at Edwards Air Force Base in California. A fun fact is that the actual first flight of the YF-16 occurred by accident a few weeks earlier. A test pilot was forced to take off in order to avoid crashing while doing some high-speed taxi exercises. Both the planned and accidental maiden flights were determined to be a success. Northrop's prototype was called the YF-17 and also completed several test flights in the following months. The experimental planes received further attention when Belgium, Denmark, the Netherlands, and Norway all expressed interest in also replacing their aging fighter aircrafts and agreed to place orders for purchase once General Dynamics and Northrop finished their competition. As development of the YF-16 and YF-17 continued, it became clear that test pilots greatly preferred General Dynamics YF-16, as it proved to be more nimble and had the unique ability to snap between different aerial maneuvers with ease. In addition, the fact that the YF-16 used the same engine as the already in-service F-15 gave it an element of universality that greatly impressed the military. Thus, in January 1975, General Dynamics YF-16 was announced as the winner of the competition. Northrop didn't leave the competition empty-handed, however, as the YF-17 would go on to inspire the Navy's F-A-18 Hornet. Before final production began on the F-16, a few tweaks were made. The fuselage was lengthened, the nose was enlarged to fit a new radar system, the wing area was increased, and the ventral fins were enlarged. In total, the final F-16's weight was 25% greater than that of its prototype model. The first finished operational F-16 rolled into service in October of 1980 with the 34th Tactical Fighter Squadron of the U.S. Air Force in Utah. The F-16 was also given its official common name of the Fighting Falcon. But most crews and pilots often refer to it as the Viper, due to its resemblance to the Colonial Viper Starfighter from Battlestar Galactica. The F-16 is typically piloted by a one-man crew, has a length of about 49 feet or 15 meters, and a wingspan of 32 feet or 10 meters. The swept delta wing has a leading edge angled at 40 degrees, and the side wings of the craft have a considerably low aspect ratio. This low aspect ratio increases roll rates and directional stability while using the vortex lift phenomenon to keep the craft airborne. Most current F-16s are powered by a General Electric F-110 power plant that produces about 76,000 newtons of thrust, resulting in an incredible thrust-to-weight ratio of 1.37. 
for reference. A typical commercial jet has a thrust to weight ratio of around 0.3. Having a ratio greater than one means that the craft can climb directly upward in a perfect vertical. The F-16 is considerably lighter and smaller than all of its predecessors, but is still highly durable. Being the first fighter craft capable of handling 9G maneuvers, the F-16 is made of 80% aluminum alloys as well as steel and titanium. The F-16 is also a notably more simple craft than many of its predecessors. There are relatively few lubrication points, fuel line connections, and replaceable modules on the F-16, making it much easier to conduct maintenance jobs. The U.S. Air Force requested that the F-16 have a structural lifespan of 4,000 flight hours, but General Dynamic Engineers were able to give the craft a lifespan of over 8,000 flight hours. For weaponry, the F-16 comes equipped with a 20mm M61A1 Vulcan cannon, capable of firing around 100 rounds per second. In terms of heavier firepower, the F-16 can carry a variety of air-to-air -air missiles, as well as an extensive variety of air-to-ground missiles. Possibly the most interesting part of the F-16's design is in its stability. Most aircraft are designed to have positive static stability, meaning the aircraft will have a tendency to return to a straight direction and level orientation if the pilot releases the controls. While having some automatic stabilization makes the aircraft safer and easier to operate, increased drag is also created from the additional work done by the elevators and stabilizers that are constantly trying to stabilize the aircraft. The F-16 is actually the first fighting aircraft to have relaxed static stability. When the orientation of an aircraft with relaxed stability is changed by a pitch, roll, or turn, the aircraft will want to continue to shift in that direction rather than return to a neutral starting point. This design philosophy requires pilots to be more skilled and engaged with the controls, but maneuverability and speed are significantly increased. In order to accommodate the high speeds and intense forces that occur in high-speed flight, the F-16 uses a fly-by-wire system, meaning the pilot controls are not directly connected to the movable parts of the plane. Instead, inputs from the pilot are fed to a computer, which engages the mechanisms used to adjust the flaps and wings. While the F-16 is clearly an impressive fighter jet, its earlier models were plagued by some issues. The original engine planned to be used had a tendency to stall, causing the craft to lose all propulsion force. This was such an issue that test pilots were required to operate the F-16 within dead stick landing distance, meaning within distance where they could safely land, even with a total loss of power. In many ways, the F-16 is easier to maintain than many of its contemporaries, but it still requires roughly 16 hours of maintenance work per flight hour. Like many present-day American military vehicles, the F-16 saw its first action during Desert Storm in 1991, where it recorded more flight missions than any other aircraft. F-16s would go on to be used by patrolling no-fly zones over Iraq in the early 2000s. An interesting fact is that two unarmed F-16s were launched in response to the September 11th terror attacks. The F-16s were tasked with ramming into Flight 93 before it could be used as an improvised missile, but the passengers on board Flight 93 were able to stop the hijackers before the F-16s could get there. In 2022, the Air Force announced that America would continue operating the F-16 for another 20 years, with the Lockheed Martin F-35 slowly beginning to replace the F-16. While the F-16 is an American-made fighter plane, it saw its first air-to-air -air combat with the Israeli Air Force all the way back in 1981, when a Syrian Mi-8 helicopter was downed by an F-16's cannon fire. The F-16 further developed its lethal reputation when an Iraqi nuclear reactor was destroyed by the Israeli Air Force, also in 1981. In 1982, Israeli F-16s would score 44 air-to-air -air kills in the Lebanon War. The F-16 has been employed by a wide variety of countries in the past 40 years, such as Pakistan, Turkey, Egypt, the Ukraine, and Venezuela. In fact, the F-16 has become so widely regarded that it is currently used by 25 different countries around the world. While the F-16 definitely has a lot of positive attributes, the popularity of the F-16 is more likely contributed to by a lack of negative attributes. The F-16 is not the fastest, toughest, or scariest fighter jet in the sky but it isn't particularly bad at anything. This well-roundedness has increased demand for the F-16 all over the world, to a point where it is the most widely used fighter aircraft in the world. There are currently almost twice as many active F-16s than the next most popular fighter jet. 
the Russian Su-27 flanker. Because there are so many S-16s, spare parts are also extremely common and relatively cheap, providing another advantage by lowering maintenance costs. Additionally, with so many different countries employing the F-16, optional upgrades to the plane are extremely universal and easy to install, causing the F-16 to sometimes be referred to as the Swiss Army Knife of fighter crafts. Whether the mission calls for blowing up ground targets, shooting down enemy fighters, or even intercepting enemy missiles, the F-16 can get the job done, all at a reasonable price. We hope you enjoyed our look into the F-16 Fighting Falcon, or Viper, depending on who you ask. With over 50 years of service, the F-16 has cemented itself as a staple in military aviation and will most likely see at least a few more decades of service.